So this is question number 14 of a possible 15. It is worth £500,000. This is the question. Which is the shortest book of the Old Testament? Amos, Micah, Ruth, Obadiah. I think it's Obadiah at one page, but I'm not going to put £218,000 on a hunch. If you'll forgive me. I'm afraid I can't help you either. I wouldn't have the slightest last, idea last on that. Last and mm. You said, what's the last book of the Old Testament? I'd have told you. Take your time, there's no uh, time Malachi. limit at all. <laughs> but and sure. sadly, we have no lifelines. No. We? we used all of those up no, last and, and, and I don't think we've got the Archbishop of Canterbury in our lineup of experts anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a 50-50 left, I'd go with it. Mm. If they left me Ruth and Obadiah, I'd know Ruth's about 22 pages. But I think Obadiah has one. However, which is the shortest book of the Old Testament? Can't do it. Amos, Micah, Ruth, Obadiah. It's up to you. It's worth five hundred thousand pounds. No, it's not a decision, really. Sorry. We can't. Final answer. Final answer. Final answer is we have to Afraid go with so. the money. Final answer. Mm. Okay. Uh, listen. Never mind. Fantastic. Give a big hand. They go away. Yes, thank you, Fred. Now you can take it. Now have a look at it. You can take it. Yeah. <laughs> Frederick and Gloria, quite breathtaking. They go away with this check. Thank for two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Thank you, Freddie, very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he says it was over die, you'll say, why did we get half a mil? I know, that's brilliant. Just thank you. Just before you go, because I know it, it'll nag you all the way home, and you you'll go, oh, what was it? What was it? What what might have been? Whatever. I can tell you, if you'd said to me, Obadiah, you wouldn't be sitting there smugly now with that check in your hand for two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. I would have taken it out of your hands. I would have torn it into a thousand pieces. I would have replaced it with one for five or so hundred thousand pounds. If it was my money, I'd have done it. What a shame. What a shame. Mm. What a shame. Mm. As you say, it's not your money. You could but not you, have risked it. But you played an absolute blind game. Frederick Forsyth, I have to say, has been the most amazing contestant I think we've ever had. With Gloria, of course. Of course, of course. Give a big hand. Gloria, Frederick, go away. Thank bless you, you guys. Thank you very so much. So good. Thank you. Bless I really you enjoyed guys. it. Fantastic. Frederick, bless you, mate. Fantastic. £250,000. Oh, Obadiah, Obadiah. So, Gloria and Freddie go away having raised quite breathtaking £250,000 for their chosen charities. It does mean it's time now to welcome our next celebrity pair tonight, former members of Spandau Ballet, Tony Hadley and John Keeble. <laughs> Very good. Right, here we have Tony Hadley and John Keeble, past members of the hugely successful 1980s pop group Spandau Ballet. John was the drummer, Tony the band's lead singer, and the two still perform together on stage, though Spandau Ballet themselves split up back in 1990. Uh, the group were part of a new romantic movement in which men wore a lot of makeup and dressed outrageously, or in their case, wore kilts. They had their first big hit in 1980. In 1983, they topped the charts with the song True, not just here in the UK, but in 21 countries around the world. Uh, John is now setting up a new group called I Play Rock, while Tony has a very successful solo career and also recently won the TV music contest Reborn in the USA. And tonight, Tony and John are both playing on behalf of the Shooting Star Children's Hospice. Welcome, chaps. Thanks. That was a great introduction. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, I mean, Tony, why that particular charity? Uh, I'm patron of the charity, and uh, it's a children's hospice. Uh, none of the children's hospices in this country are funded by the government, and we built this fantastic centre. And it's basically for terminally ill children, uh -huh. uh, it's final respite and care, and for their families and for the kids. To support the whole yeah. family, really. I think that's the thing a lot of people don't, don't think about so much. I mean, it's obviously <coughs> dreadful for the individual child, but also for the for family. The family it's well, yeah. devastating. And if it's they have to keep visiting and they've got nowhere to stay, it's awful. Well, this, these are private rooms. and I mean, it's this place is state-of-the-art. They've built it, and it's absolutely fantastic. So you've got beautiful grounds there as well, and you've got your own rooms for the families and for the kids. And, you know, and it, it's perfect. But now, obviously, we've built the place. 
And then we need two and a half million quid a year. Keep it running. Run it. Yeah. It's 24 yeah. hour specialist care for the children and, uh, and help for the parents as well. Well, you just seen two go away with a cheque for a quarter of a million. So that would be um, if you could get up to that sort of level, it would be, uh, it would be, be brilliant, wouldn't it? But whatever, them, really. Be happy, I'll yeah. be swinging from a chandelier somewhere, don't I? Well, something I'll be to look forward happy. to, especially if you're wearing a kilt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> OK, now who's. <laughs> don't go there, Chris. Now, do you know, I really don't want to. <laughs> Who, I mean, which of you two is the. Is, I suppose I'm, what I'm saying really is, yeah. which of you two is the cleverest? Cleverest. One? Well, if we go by our academic careers, uh, Tone will tell you he left school <laughs> at a certain age. In my experience, he was asked to leave. <laughs> um, so well, you were at the same school, you two, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dame Alice Dame, so you've known yeah. each other forever. We, really? we started the band in the school music room, yeah. so uh, I've been looking at the behind of Tony Hadley for thirty years. It's a very years. nice behind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They're only 15 questions away from winning a possible £1 million pounds for their chosen charity. Now, as always, if they get stuck along the way, they have three lifelines to help them. They've got 50 50, they can phone a friend and they can ask this audience. And remember, they have to agree on all their final answers and the use of any lifelines, including their phone a friend. Right, lots of luck, Tony John. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Celebrity Millionaire? I love that music. Good. You ready for this? Yeah. Question number one is for £100. Here we go. Let's try and race you up to £1,000. A nativity play is traditionally performed at what time of year? Easter, Midsummer, Christmas, Whitsun. Christmas. When I was at school, it was definitely Christmas. Oh, yeah. Both have changed. Things changed. Uh, it's the right answer. Oh. You have £100. <laughs> what a start. <laughs> Thank God the first bit is easy. It's all going too well. Question number one is for £100. Question number two is for 200 Here it comes. An extremely docile person is often described as quiet as a... What? Mouse. Crocodile. Hippo. <laughs> jackal. Obviously. Uh, I think I'll go with you, Tone, on that. Yeah, mouse. I thought you were the clever one. Um, we'll work it out mouse. by the end. <laughs> mouse is the right answer. You've got £200. <laughs> OK, question number three for 300 quid. Here it comes. Which of these words describes someone who is very formal? Doughy, ricey, starchy, sugary. That's pretty on this. I'd go for starch. starchy. Starchy, is that your starchy? Your starchy voice. It's my starchy voice. <laughs> right answer, you've got 300 quid. <laughs> How are you feeling, Tony Hadley? I'm really not. I've got to tell you, all day I've been so looking forward to this and, and I've been really excited, haven't I? Yeah. I've been like a little kid. Because I think, oh, it's great, I'm on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And now I'm terrified. <laughs> I just want to get past these little bits here. OK. Question number four is £500. Here it comes. Which of these can be found on golf balls? Carbuncles, bunions, freckles, dimples? You're the golfer, Tony. Yeah, right. Have you also been playing off? Obviously, uh, dimples. I would agree with you, sir. Thank you, dimples. Dear. Agree on dimples? It's the right answer. You've got 500 quid. <laughs> Question number five would guarantee you £1,000. Here it comes. What would a meteorologist learn from a weather vane? Cloud height, amount of rainfall, hours of sunlight, wind direction. Wind direction. I've been pretty damn Do you sure that it's on that wind one? direction. There's weather vanes here, all yeah. the squirrely thing like on the top, yeah, top of Lords, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Old Father Time, which uh, shows direction of wind. It's good, it's the right answer. You have £1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Right, now listen, you have £1,000. You have all three lifelines untouched. Question number six is for £2,000. You cannot lose the amount of money you've got so far. Uh, this is question number six of a possible 15. You're ten away from a million. Here it comes. Complete the title of the successful West End show, Jerry Springer, the ballet, the pantomime, the drama, the opera, for £2,000. 
Have you seen it? I haven't seen it, but I, I think it's uh, the opera. I would um, um, go for the opera, my friend. Opera? Yeah, the opera. Final answer? Final answer, yeah. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. <laughs> Right, now, good. You have £2,000. You have all three lifelines intact. Question number seven is for 4000 Have a look. Tell us what you want to do. The mineral coal, K-O-H-L, coal, is most commonly used as what kind of cosmetic? Rouge, perfume, eyeliner, lipstick. Well, I've, being used, a, I've used enough of it in me Being time. an ex-new romantic. <laughs> <laughs> we should get this one, shouldn't we? <laughs> well, you should do. <laughs> We've had our moments. We've had the coal yeah. on the yeah. What have you used it as? It's the yeah. old Dusty Springfield look, yeah. isn't it? It's the, the old eyeliner. eyeliner. Um, solid on that? Solid on eyeliner. Definitely. Solid? Uh, yeah, we're happy with eyeliner, Chris. <laughs> we're happy with eyeliner. <laughs> Final answer, darling. <laughs> it's the right answer. You've got £4,000. <laughs> This is good. You've got 4,000 pounds. You have not yet touched a single lifeline, and you're cutting them down. You are now just eight away from one <coughs> million. We've already seen one couple win 250,000 pounds tonight. Question number eight. You could double your money here to 8,000 pounds. You've still got a 50 50 phone a friend and ask the audience. Here it comes. Bartlett is a variety of which fruit? John's nodding wisely. What are you waiting to see? Oh, no. Pear. Hey? Pear. 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 Okay. If pear doesn't come up, panic. A total panic. <laughs> Strawberry. <laughs> pear. Ooh. Grape. Apple. I'm pear. 100%. Yeah. You 100%. Know, Sunday pear. teas when, you know, your mum used to open the tin and that. Yeah, you see, you have little prawns, bark around pears. and stuff. Yeah. Bartlett pear afterwards. Um, uh, if you were lucky. So, final answer, we're saying pear. Final answer, final answer Bartlett pear. pear. Yes. Pear. It's the right answer. You got £8,000. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, you still have those three lifelines completely untouched. You are two away from 32,000. I will warn you, the money's going up now quite steeply. The drops get a bit sharp as well. If you give me a wrong answer at this, this next point, you would lose 7,000 of the eight <coughs> grand you've got at this moment. But you can use one, two, three lifelines, still walk away with 8,000 pounds if you're not happy. You may not need any of them at all yet. Have a look, question number nine. It's for 16,000 pounds. Which capital city follows sporting to give the name of a major European football club. You've got a little smile yeah. on your face, Tony Hadley. Yes. Yeah. I bet he has as well. Yeah, absolutely. We're big footy fans. I think you know then. See what comes up. Vienna, has it come up yet? No. no. Stockholm, has it come up yet? No. no. Bucharest, has it come no. up yet? No. You might be wrong. Lisbon, has it come up yet? Yeah. Great so. Uh, yes, the two great clubs in Lisbon, Benfica and uh, Sporting, Sporting Lisbon. Lisbon. I think we're going to go for Lisbon, mate. Yeah, Lisbon. Final answer. Final answer. Final Lisbon. answer. It's the right answer. You got sixteen thousand pounds. Yeah. I want this one. I want this one. Yeah. Now, serious business. You got sixteen grand. You could lose fifteen thousand pounds here, but the good thing is you kept all three lifelines back. Question number ten would guarantee the Shooting Star Children's Hospice. Thanks to you two guys tonight, being £32,000 better off, at least if you go for it, and <coughs> if you give me the right answer, you've got all three lifelines to help you get there. Question number 10 of a possible 15 is this. Henry VIII married which wife after first seeing her in a flattering portrait by Hans Holbein? John, you're doing your grin again. No, that's a struggling grin. Oh, is it a struggling <laughs> grin? OK, take your time, you've got three lifelines. Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, Anne of Cleves. Mm, this is a tricky one. Um, I haven't got a given it. Given it this, Hans Holbein, obviously Dutch or something like that. I think he was Dutch. Uh, given uh, that all the others were English, apart from Catherine of Aragon. I would say it was Catherine of Aragon, but 
I hope. <clears throat> if it was my own money, I'd, I'd probably go Catherine Harrigan and take a chance. But it's just, not. Because that's the sort of cloak I am. Uh, on this, I think we've got to... I think we're going to have to get a bit of help on this. I'm tempted to phone a friend on this one. Are you? Actually, yeah. I'd go ask the audience. All right. See if I can ask dig, the audience. dig us out of a hole. Let, let's ask the audience. Let's, 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 we said we'd start off that yep. way. OK, no, I agree. Um, we're going yeah. to ask the audience. OK, we're going to ask the audience. Right, audience, Come your on, chance guys. to shine. Now, here we are. This is the question. It's worth £32,000. Here it comes. Henry VIII married which wife after first seeing her in a flattering portrait by Hans Holbein? Now, A on your keypads would be Catherine of Aragon, B, Anne Boleyn, C, Catherine Howard, D, Anne of Cleves, A, B, C or D. It's worth £32,000. All vote now. Um, 38%. I mean, the biggest percentage say Anne of Cleves, 31, Catherine of Aragon, 14, Anne Boleyn, 17. They don't really know. Catherine do they? Howard. <laughs> well, let's be honest. There is that that interpretation. Like, that's guesswork, isn't it? Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Although it has identified <laughs> the two. The two, yeah. That we're hunching about. OK, well then I'd phone. Who would we meet? Who are you going to phone? What do you reckon? Well, Mark Atmore studied <laughs> history. At university and has got a first class honours and everything. So I reckon like that. this is a big jump. I reckon we need to go there. Mark Atmore. Mark Atmore. Yeah. Who's he? Yeah. Great guy, works in the city, and uh, he's a very, very clever lad. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I really hope, yeah, hopefully. Okay, where's he? You can talk to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, have a, I'll have a quick word. Hello. Mark? Yeah. Chris Tarrant here, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very good. Well, you know what we're doing, Mark? We're right in the middle of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I've got Tony and John here. They're doing all right, actually. Uh, uh, but from, uh, are those the guys from Duran Duran, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was it. That was one of their bands. Yeah. Um, yeah I've always liked them. Well, now, they're doing OK, but they're stuck on a particular question now. It is worth £32,000, so it's serious business. All right, mate? Absolutely. Uh, golly, <laughs> golly. Next voice you hear will be Tony's. He will tell you the question. There are still four possible answers. One of these is worth thirty-two grand. All right, mate? Yeah. Okay, turn lots of light. Your time starts now. Mark, Henry yeah. VIII married which wife after first seeing her in a flattering portrait by Hans Holbein? Was it Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, or Anne of Cleves? Catherine Aragon, I think. Read me again. Uh, Henry, which, which uh, portrait by Hans Holbein? Yeah. Uh, he married her after seeing that. Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, or Anne of Cleves? It's the ugly one. Sorry? Um, it's the ugly one. It might be Anna. Which one? Cleaves, it might be Anna's Cleaves, actually. Oh, thanks, Mark. Oh, great. Good choice. He's, norm he's normally really clever. Well, yeah. Well, he's boiled it down to the same thing we do. So, so, yeah. He said it was Catherine of Aragon, and then he said, but it might have been the ugly one. one. No, the hang ugly on. one. Got to try 50. We've got to go 50, 50 now, yeah. Um, yeah? Let's go 50. Yeah, yeah. Right, OK. Computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave John and Tony the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Ooh! <laughs> Catherine of Aragon's gone and Boleyn's gone. Um, Which one of those two? Yeah. Uh, I'm just telling you, you don't have to play. You can no. walk away with 16 grand, but one of those two... 32 grand, grand makes a, big, a much bigger difference than 16 grand. Uh, but sure. you would lose 38. 15 if you're wrong, Tony. I just mentioned No, that. I know, I know. Just tell you um, that, that's all, mate. He sort of said, Mark said, Anne of Cleves. The audience have gone Anne of Cleves. We They're identified those yeah. two out of the four. <laughs> Weight of evidence would suggest yeah. Anne of Cleves. Anne of Cleves. Are we going to go for it, mate? Anne of Cleves, final answer. Final yeah. answer? Final answer. Final answer. Mm -hmm. It's the right answer. You just won £32,000. Yes. Hey, right, right. oh. no, no, no. Tony, you were in a bit of a lather just now. 
weren't yeah. you? And you were saying you've been <laughs> very calm all day and suddenly you got terribly nervous. How, yeah. how are you feeling now? I'm very happy. I'm a bit cheesed off with used all our lifelines, and I should have known Anacles. But... So, settle down to us, mate. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> now, let me just show you what you've done. That is the minimum amount you will leave here with tonight, £32,000. That makes a huge difference. Yeah, the really Kids does. Hospice of Shooting Stars, which is great, right? But next one is worth 64000 and this is one of those you might as well play it because you can't lose any. Question number 11 is for £64,000. Here it comes. In 2004, the Doncaster and Sheffield Airport was named in honour of whom? King Arthur. Rob Roy. Richard the Lionheart. Robin Hood. You, you might as well play this, you can't lose. Have you been to this airport? No, I've been to loads of them, but not this one. That's the only airport we've never been to on the planet. Donkist the Doncaster and Sheffield Airport was named in honour of them. Well, it ain't Rob Roy. Well, because he was Scottish. He was Scottish, yeah. <laughs> Richard not the, Richard the Nottingham's not far from Sheffield and Doncaster. Yeah, I mean, that's... King Arthur was... King Arthur was down kind south. Cornwall way. Yeah, it was that kind of way. Richard, Richard the Lionheart. Lionheart. You know, Richard the Lionheart Airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's a is it, really? I mean, he was a great bloke and everything. <laughs> um, you know, done a lot of good. S spoke highly of you. Yeah, I know, he's a nice fella. Uh, the Robin Hood Airport. Oh. But wouldn't that be Nottingham, <laughs> though? Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, OK. All right, how far away? We were in Sherwood Forest just the other day. Nottingham and Sheffield is pretty close. It's not far. Yeah. Because we're in North and Nottingham, probably. What do you want to do? Uh, we ain't got no lifelines left. No. Uh, we've got, we, we got 32 grand. By the process of elimination and by the closest proximity, I would have to go for Robin Hood. So would I. And if it, if it sneaks in the back of the net, we'll be well at I'll be very happy. Take a chance, Robin Hood? Yeah, mate. Let's go then. Final answer? Final answer. Final answer. John, yes, Tony, you've just won sixty-four thousand pounds. <laughs> oh, fantastic! <laughs> you must make a point of going there, Tony. Oh dear. No, I tell oh. you what, the um, fantastic. The really? thought processes there were pretty good, and in fact, I think Robin Hood. Although everybody thinks about Sherwood Forest, yeah. I think he was. I think he was believed to have been born uh, in Loxley, which is just outside Sheffield. Anyway, either way, it's the right answer. Have a look at what you've done now. For that, Ooh, you 64. clever twosome. <laughs> sixty-four thousand pounds. Fantastic! I'm Bring really, it on. really pleased. Bring it on, baby. Right, you got sixty-four grand. Question number twelve. Now you can lose on this. You could lose yeah. thirty-two thousand pounds. You have no lifelines, but who knows <sighs> what may come from the depths of your brain? Have a look and see what happens. Question number twelve is for 125 grand. Have a look at it. You're four away from one million pounds. Here it comes. Little Big Painting is a work by which artist? Roy Lichtenstein, David Hockney, Jasper Johns, Jackson Pollock, for 125,000 pounds. I've not got a clue. I don't know. My, my gut reaction is Jackson Pollock, but I'm just not oh, familiar enough I'm, I'm with not, it. I'm not good enough on art, I guess that's a real weak point. Uh, Jasper Johns, never heard of. Roy Lichtenstein, I've heard of this, the Hockney. Um, I'm feeling Jackson Pollock, but... £32,000 drop is That's a, lot of a money. little ugly. So, um, I think we should retire. We've had a, had a great time, great day. We've been and, very good. Um, and we've got 64 grand. Um, I think we'd have settled for We got past the £1,000, so I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> so you got £63,000 past that. Yeah. Sell, sell for 64. Sell for 64. Yeah. Final answer. Tick the money. Give them a big oh, hand. They go away with this. Can you take it now? This check for £64,000. Get a check, my friend. Thanks, mate. Thanks. If you'd been a little bit braver and gone for Jackson Pollock, you'd have been completely and utterly wrong, because the right answer is Roy Lichtenstein. <laughs> Did you do the right thing? They go away with <laughs> £64,000. <laughs> well played, guys. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Chris. Good. 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 Good.
Thanks, mate. 64,000 pounds.